so good to me. Before I took the breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so
Well, I uh, want to uh, encourage you to take your, your connection card and please fill that out if you're uh, a first-time guest with us today. We're glad you've chosen to join us for, for worship on this uh, Sunday before Christmas. I hope that you'll fill it out and share as much information as you're, you're comfortable sharing. And when the offering baskets are passed later on in the service, would uh, invite you to put that in the offering basket at, at that time. Also, if you're a first-time guest today, please stop by the starting point on your way out because we've got a, a gift that we want to, to give to you. The prophet Isaiah wrote these words. said, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a, a light has dawned. We need to hear a, a word of hope this morning. There will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. The people walking in darkness will have seen a great light. It's been a, a week of, or the last two or three days, have been days of um, gloom and darkness for our church community as as well as for the, the Monticello area. As many of you know, on Friday evening, there was an automobile accident involving five teenagers from our community. Three of the teens survived the, the accident and were dismissed from the hospital, but, but two of them were, were killed. The two students who, who died were Anahi Garcia and, and Elise Dold. Elise has uh, regularly been a part of, of this service and also a part of... Uh, 648, the, the senior high ministry. You know, Friday night, uh, you know, we, we opened the church as, um, as a gathering place for students, and, and um, you know, as word traveled quickly about the accident and, and also through social media, you know, there were probably 150 to 200 students, as well as uh, parents, the school superintendent, school board members, uh, other administrators from the the school were, were here as I tried to, to provide a place for, for students to come and also to, to provide support for them in, in just um, the, the time of grief and sadness. Yesterday, at, um, from 11 to 1, we opened the church up again for anyone that needed to, to come and to talk to someone or, or just to, uh, to, to be with, with other friends. And, and there weren't as many as Friday night, but we guess there were maybe about as half as many yesterday from 11 to 1 here in, in Connection Court and, and, you know, in the loft in various places uh, yesterday. This evening at, at 5 o'clock, there's going to be a, a youth community service that's going to actually be in our, in our sanctuary. Youth pastors from the area are going to, to lead that, that service. It's going to be a time of, of um, helping the students come together and and remembering uh, Anahi and, and Elise. Uh, the service is designed with the intent of, of helping them to, to just deal with their, their own grief and their emotions and, and, and working through that. Uh, any adults who, who come tonight are going to be invited to come down to, to Connection Court. We're going to have a, a video connection where we can watch the, watch the, the, the service live and, and what's going on there. And for parents, we've got a, a resource, a, a kind of a, a sheet to kind of help you to, uh, to have some conversations with your kids and, and also uh, just some, some things to watch for as, as, um, and be aware of as they're dealing with a, a time of uh, just intense emotions and, and grief. You know, the, the youth, or, nor none of us, are, are going to be able to just simply turn off our grief after the, after the service tonight. But one of the things that's going to happen this evening is they're going to be encouraged to you know, engage their families the next two days. You know, tomorrow's Christmas Eve and, and then uh, Christmas on Tuesday. You know, a lot of families have, have plans. And you know, as, uh, as we're still dealing with the grief, you know, we're going to encourage the, the kids to, you know, to embrace what's going on with, with their families in, on Monday and Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, uh, there will be a public visitation and a, and a funeral for Anahi at, at Twin Lakes High School. And then on Thursday, there will be a, a public visitation uh, for Elise 
here in Connection Court. That public visitation will be from, from 11 until 2. And then at 2.30, uh, her funeral will, will be in our, our sanctuary. Um, you know, this, uh, <clears throat> this week, you know, it has been a, a pretty intense week with, with the accident, but there's also a, another challenge that, uh, that a family in our congregation has, has faced this week. On uh, Thursday evening, Tara Sprinkle, uh, the daughter of, of Jan and Jessica Rule, the, the mother of Isabel Sprinkle, uh, she was found unconscious and in, in, in cardiac arrest. And so she was taken to, an amb to a hospital in Indianapolis where she's been in, in critical condition. And, um, you know, they, they've been telling the, the family that there, there just wasn't much hope. And uh, you know, tomorrow was kind of the, <clears throat> the day that was going to be critical in, in finding out whether there was going to whether she was going to be able to survive or not. But just before the um, the 9:30 service this morning, I, I got a phone call that she had had a, a turn for the worse. I was going to go down and be with the family this afternoon, but um, you know because of the the critical nature of the situation, you know Kelly, uh, Pastor Kelly went. Uh, right away to, to be with them the, this morning. So uh, we need to, to keep the Tara's family, uh, the, the rural family, Sprinkles, in, um, in our prayers as it's a, a very, very difficult time. You know, and as we deal with those very um, difficult situations as a congregation, you know, staff also walks through that as well, and, and many people have said things to me the, this morning uh, and I just want to make sure that you know, when we go through something like this, it's not just me. It's the entire staff is coming together. The entire staff is coming together as a team, doing what's necessary to, to care for the needs of the congregation. And also, their families are impacted as well, you know, because uh, most of us have uh, Christmas celebrations that are playing just like you and uh, over the course of this weekend and the next few days. And so just keep the, the staff and their families in your prayers because, um, because it's, it's, a, it's a heavy load to, um, uh, to walk the community through this, um, you know, this very sad time. Our hearts are, are heavy and sad, and it, it feels like we're, we're walking in, in gloom and darkness. But we, may we never forget that as men and women of hope that a light has come. And that light is Jesus. So I want to invite you to uh, join me in prayer. And I don't know if this connects with any of you or not, but I've just sensed the Spirit kind of prompting me that if you just want to kneel where you're at in your chair or um, there, there's chairs that are empty up front, if you want to move around and, and kneel, or, or you can just bow your head where you are. But I uh, just want us to, to go to the Lord uh, for, for a period of prayer. Let's join together. Lord, our hearts break. Our hearts break as a church community and, and our hearts break as a, as a Monticello community. We don't know what to, what exactly to, to say except, Lord, help us. We just ask that you would come near and, and help us as we walk through this, this sad and very difficult um, path of grief. Lord, we pray for, for the families, the families who have lost loved ones. We just ask that, uh, that you would come and, and surround them in, in their grief. May they know of your loving presence. Lord, during this uh, season of Christmas, may, um, may your light shine in into their lives and hearts, even, even amid the, the darkness and the gloom and despair that they face. Lord, I pray that you would give those families strength. I pray that they would find strength and, and hope as they lean on you and lean on one another and lean on friends. Lord, I pray for particularly the, the student community, for, the, for teenagers in Monticello that have been touched by, by these deaths. Lord, walk with them in their in their journey of grief, I pray that um, even the, 
this afternoon or this evening as, as students come to, together for, for a, a service in, in our sanctuary, that, that it would somehow be a service that would be another step in the, the healing process, in the, in the coming to, to grips and, and coping with the, the situation. Lord, I just pray for those students who are struggling, for those friends who, um, whose hearts are broken because of the, the loss of, of friends, and that you would just come near and, and walk with them and, and give them strength, give them courage. Lord, I pray for parents, parents who are struggling to know how to help their, their, um, their children, parents who just want to hold their, their kids close and, and think that that's going to, um, uh, to keep them safe forever. Lord, I pray for, for those parents who are, are struggling with, um, with just how to, how to respond as well. Pray that you would give them wisdom. I pray that, uh, that you would, would help them as they seek to walk, walk with their child during, during this time. Lord, we pray for Tara's family, for, for the rural family. Lord, whatever they're facing in the hospital today, for, for Isabel, just pray that, uh, that you would come near with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that uh, you would wrap your loving arms around them and just give them strength, give them courage. Give them hope in the midst of the despair that, that they're facing in, in this day. Lord, as we come before you, we try to speak words, but the words seem so inadequate. But Lord, may you hear our prayers those that we are able to put into words as well as just those groanings, those longings with, within our spirit that we know that, that you can understand and discern. Lord, hear our prayers. For we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. cries for order everything inside me wants to hide is the shadow an angel or a warrior if God is pleased with me why am I so terrified someone tell me I am only dreaming Someone help me see with heaven's eyes. And before my head agrees, my heart is on its knees. Holy is he, blessed I am, be born. told her that she would conceive the child in her womb and would call him Jesus. Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And Mary sings her song of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord. He has scattered the proud. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry. 
he has provided for the poor. at this Mary, the, the mother of the Messiah, herself a single teenage mother, herself poor and powerless. But she understood that the baby she would call Jesus was sent not just to her, but to this world, to the hungry, to the weak, to the very young and the very old, to those who suffer or are in pain. We light this fourth candle to remember Mary, the mother of Jesus. May the light of this candle also remind us that the light of Jesus shines for everyone. Well, the last 48 hours have been very difficult for our community and for our church community. But even as we're dealing with uh, sadness and grief and heaviness of heart, I also need to, to remind you that uh, this is the Sunday before Christmas. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent. Christmas is just two days away in, in which we, we celebrate the, the, the birth of, of Jesus uh, coming in, into the world. I feel a tension today. Uh, a tension between the, the grief and the heaviness and, and also the, the celebration. So I don't mean to, to be insensitive, but I hope maybe we can shift gears just for, uh, for a few moments. And as we think about the, the Christmas story, and um, so we're, we had some of the children uh, tell the Christmas story in their own words. And so we've, we've put that together, and, and so we'll let them tell you the, the Christmas story this morning. Greetings, Mary. You are going, you are going to have a baby. The angel told Mary that she will have a baby. Told 
Joseph in his dream that he was going to have a baby and he wasn't ready for what a baby. Joseph wanted to break up with Mary. Then he had a dream and he said, and he said, the angel was in it. Don't break up with Mary. So then when he woke up, he, no, he did break up with me. Then they rode on a donkey, well, Mary rode on a donkey, and went to Bethlehem. He got born in Bethlehem! And they had to walk a really ways. They tried getting in a hotel, but they couldn't, so they had to stay in a barn. I and you. You, there's not enough room, so you will have, and you, so you'll have to go in the barn. Then we had a baby. Then the angel told the shepherds, and the shepherds followed the sh star, the, the big, the big star, and, and worshipped. And it led up it Jesus, led it, and it led them to Bethlehem. The wise men. No. Followed the star all the way to, to the stable. And then the wise men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, I hope you got the, the gist of the story in, in there. Well, during this uh, season of Advent, we've been talking about unwrapping the, the true meaning of Christmas. And so each week we've been unwrapping a, a different gift. On the first week of Advent, we, um, you know, we unwrapped a, a white elephant gift. And a reminder that even though something that maybe others may think were unwanted or, or want, unnecessary, in God's eyes, he sees us as, as having immeasurable value. Uh, on the second week, we, um, we unwrapped a, a box of dog biscuits, and uh, we, we talked about during the, the season of Advent a, a time of waiting, a, a time of, of preparation. And then last week, as Pastor Kelly was preaching, she unwrapped a, a, a box of, of Band-Aids and talked a, about how um, Jesus can, can bring healing in, in the midst of our brokenness. And so uh, today, we've got a, another gift to to unwrap here, and uh, so this morning, our gift is a mirror. Now, can you think of any uh, famous mirrors in, uh, in movies over the years? Snow White, okay. Did Snow White's mirror have a name? Uh, but it was just the, the, the witch talked to the mirror and mirror, mirror on the wall. Can you think of any other movies that have a, a famous, um, famous mirror in it? Okay, Alice in Wonderland and looking in the looking glass. Any Harry Potter fans out there? So what, what was the mirror in Harry Potter? What was that? Okay, that's right. Um, I'm not a Harry Potter fan. Um, but they stood in front of that mirror, and, and that, that mirror re revealed kind of their, their, their deepest, deepest want or desire or, or wish. And when, when, um, when Harry stood in, in front of it, you know, he saw pictures of, of his parents you know, who had died when he was young, and, and he wanted them to, uh, to return. That was his, his deepest de desire. Well, um, this morning... When, when we look in a mirror, you know, who do you see? Or maybe, maybe more than who do you see, what, what do you see? Do you look in a mirror, oh, I'm gorgeous. Uh, no, normally we look in the mirror and, are you really that old? You know, have you got another wrinkle? Is that really another zit that's coming up there? You know, normally when we look in a, in a mirror, um, we look at ourselves critically. 
we look at our, ourselves critically and, and, and oftentimes it's, it's a, a reason for us to, to put ourselves down. But sometimes uh, sometimes there, there's a mirror that's two-sided. One side is, is kind of normal uh, looking and, and you look at the other side and oh, everything's magnified. It may be distorted a, a little bit, but our, our imperfections you know, look even, even bigger, even greater at that point. Well, you know, as, uh, as we think about the, the, the story, wouldn't it be neat if, if as we look in a, in a mirror, we could see the, the good things? We looked in a mirror that we could see what it is that God's doing in us. Uh, not necessarily a crystal ball, but, but being able to, to look in that mirror and, and, and see that even though we're going through tough times now, even now things are tumultuous, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. There, there, is, a, there is hope. There, there's something better that, that's going to be, be coming along. You know, Mary was, was a young girl that, that lived in Nazareth. You know, she grew up in a family who struggled to get by. They didn't have wealth. They, they didn't have high um, status in, in the community. One day, uh, an angel shows up and, to tell Mary that, that she has been chosen to bear God's son, that she has found favor with, with God. Now, now, figuratively, Mary looks in her mirror and, and she says, you know, why me? You know, why would God ever choose me? You, know, you must have the, the wrong girl. Surely, surely God couldn't or wouldn't want to, to use me. The angel told Mary that she would give birth to a son and that they were to, to name the, the baby Jesus. And as the angel was trying to convince Mary that, that you know, he was at the right place, she was the one that, that God had chosen, he, he said, you know, your relative Elizabeth, uh, who is old and thought she was never going to have a baby, is now in her sixth month of, of a pregnancy. And so you can go and, and, and kind of verify what I'm saying to, as you go and and see that, uh, that Elizabeth is, is indeed pregnant. Now Mary, Mary agrees to be used by, by God, even though her life would be turned upside down. Her life would be turned upside down. What would she say to Joseph? What would she say to her, her parents? What would uh, the, those in the community say as, as word got, got around? You know, Mary was feeling a, a lot of turmoil. She was, she was willing to be used by, by God, but she I don't know that she was real joyful at, at, at this point. You know, Mary agrees to, to be used by, by God, but, um, but she asks her, herself the, the question, why would God ever, ever want to choose me? When Moses was called by God and by the burn, at the burning bush, Moses made all sorts of excuses and said, no, you want my brother, you, you've got the, the wrong man, God. Or... Um, when the prophet Isaiah was called, you know, he said, but, but God, I'm a, I'm a man of unclean lips. When uh, God called Jonah, what did he do? But he, he ran in the, in the opposite direction. In the case of Mary, she was willing, but she thought that, that God had surely made a mistake. She was willing, but she wasn't necessarily overcome with joy. You know, Maybe we, we need to, to look in a mirror and, and take a, a closer look to, to see ourselves as God sees us, to see the potential that, that God sees. And, and sometimes when God calls us, we may need a friend to come alongside us and, and to help us figure out or, or understand what God might be saying or, or to encourage us. You know, Mary needed a friend, and that friend for her was, was Elizabeth. Elizabeth was a relative, but, but as she arrived at, at Elizabeth's home, she found that Elizabeth w was pregnant, just like the, the angel had, had told her. And when Elizabeth greeted Mary, she said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you're going to, to bear. Now, it was Elizabeth, not the, the angel that was, was talking to Mary, and, and in essence, she was, was saying to, to Mary, Do you see what I see, Mary? Do you see what God sees, Mary? 
you know, you are, are one that's found favor in, in the eyes of God, and, and uh, you, you're, you're special. You, you've been chosen. You know, Elizabeth knew that Mary was blessed by God, and she helped Mary to, to see it. Do you have someone in, in your life that can help you to, to see what God sees in you? Do you have an Elizabeth who will come alongside you and, and help you? Uh, someone will come alongside you in, in your discouragement. Someone will come alongside you in, in your, uh, your, your confusion and, and try to figure things out. Help you to, to see things as, as God may see them in you. you know, I had a, a time in my life several years ago when I was going through some, some, some real struggles, you know, because of, of um, the, because of a death, you know, actually circumstances similar to, uh, to what we just described going on in our community the, this week. And I was struggling and, you know, trying to figure out where, where is God in, in all of this and how do I, how do I go on? And, and Stan was a friend that came alongside me and, and he just listened to me talk. You know, Stan didn't give me any pat or easy answers. He listened, he encouraged you know, he, he stuck with me. It was an issue that, uh, through my sadness, you know, Stan helped me to look in the mirror and, and see that, that even though I was struggling, that, that God was there. God w was still walking with me and, and helping me. We all need a person in our life that, that could help us to, to see what it is that, that God is, is doing in, in the midst of the chaos of our lives. We also can be that person for someone else. We can come alongside someone and, and listen and encourage and, and help them in, in their struggles. We don't have to have all the answers, but uh, just being there for them and, and helping them uh, and listening to them in, in their struggles. Mary was humble. She was not full of herself. You know, but I think that Mary only experienced really the joy of what was happening when uh, Elizabeth helped her to see what God saw her in her. You know, it was only when Elizabeth helped her to realize what, what the, the message was that the angel was giving to her that she, that she could really experience the joy. So it was after Elizabeth came alongside her that, that Mary has these words of joy that are in today's scripture reading. When Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of my humble state of, of his servant. For, from now on, all generations will, will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed highly deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in, in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but, but has lifted up the humble. He has fulfilled the, the hungry with, with he has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the, the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to, to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Mary said, For for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. You know, Mary is not glorifying herself, but in her celebration in this section of Scripture called the, the Magnificat, she, she's lifting God up. She's lifting God up for, for what it is that he is doing in, uh, in the world and, and, and praising God that, that he has chosen her, chosen her to, to, to be a part of, of his plan. God can do great things in our lives, even when our lives are upended. Mary needed Elizabeth's encouragement to, to bring things in, into to focus in her life. As people of faith, we, we need one another. In times of darkness, in times of doubt, in, in times of despair, we need to, to lean on one another. I believe that the God is asking us a question this morning. Do you see what I see? 
God sees people with, with the ability to, to share the, the light of Christ in, in the world in, in which we live. And like Mary, we don't have to have it all figured out. We don't have to know all the answers. Mary, I believe she tried to, to figure out what the angel had first told her for all 33 years of Jesus' life. I think she was always trying to figure out exactly what it was that God was doing through her son. But what's important for us to, to see about Mary was she was willing to take one step. She was willing to take the next step. She said to God, I'm willing. Even though I don't understand your whole plan, even though I don't understand what's going to happen next, she says, I'm willing. I'm willing to be your servant. God sees great potential in each one of you in, in this room. But are you willing? Are you willing to take a step of faith and make yourself available to Him? Let us pray. Lord, as we come before you in, in this day, we know that you see us for who we, we truly are. And sometimes we doubt our, our worth. We sometimes doubt our, our value. But Lord, I, I pray that um, you would help us to, to see what you see. Lord, I pray that you would bring someone alongside us that, that would help us to, to point us more faithfully in, in your direction. Lord, I pray that you might use us to, to come beside someone else who, who may need encouragement. Lord, as we take a step of faith today, as we say we're, we're willing, even though we don't, don't understand all the whys and, and can't a answer all the, the questions, help us to trust you with the next step. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. We invite you all to stand and sing with us once again. I pray on Christmas that the Lord will see me through. I pray on Christmas he'll show me what to do. I pray on Christmas uh -oh, he'll help me understand. I pray on Christmas, you'll take me by the hand. I pray on Christmas, that the sick will soon be strong. I pray on Christmas, the Lord will hear my song. I pray on Christmas, the God will
You can go ahead and be seated for just a moment. You know, our, our memory verse this week is uh, from Luke chapter 1, not 2. Yeah. Luke chapter 1, verse 49. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is, is his name. May that be a, uh, an encouragement to you in, in this coming week. I want to give you some, some next steps. One is I'm willing to make myself available uh, for God in, in this coming week. You, know, you don't have to understand everything. You don't have to have all the answers. But, but are, like Mary, are, are you willing? Are you willing to, to make yourself available? And, and secondly, uh, you can take a next step to, um, to come alongside someone, someone who needs a, a listening ear, someone who, who needs encouragement, someone who, who needs maybe help looking in the mirror and, and seeing what, what God sees in them. And... Um, you know, every year we, we encourage you, we invite you to, uh, to bring someone with you to, to the Christmas Eve service. But I think this year, more than, more than ever, I want to encourage you to, um, to invite a friend, invite a family to come with you as we're struggling with, uh, with what we're going through as a community. We need to hear about the, the light and the hope that, that Christ brings. And so I hope that you will We'll come back tomorrow evening for one of the three services and uh, bring someone with you for that service. Well, as we come to our time of offering, would encourage you if, uh, to take your connection card and to, to put that uh, in the offering plate. You know, as you've marked some next steps, that's a way that you're offering yourself to, to God in, in this, this coming week. Also, um, if you're a first-time guest with us, please stop by the starting point on your way out and, and pick up the, the gift that we have for you. Also, as you give of your tithes and offerings, would remind you that that goes to, to support the, the various ministries that, that happen in, in this church. And, and actually, it's because of your, your giving, your tithes and offerings, that we were able to open this building on, on Friday night and, and again yesterday and, and, to, and tonight uh, for students to come in. So those are things that, uh, as you give, you're helping ministry to happen in, in this space. So let's pray together. Lord, as we come to our time of offering, we, um, we give of ourselves and next steps for, for this coming week. We also give of our, uh, our tithes and offerings. We just pray that, uh, that those tithes and offerings might be used in, in such a way that it makes a, an impact on the lives of individuals. Lord, may you bless what we give in order that it might make a difference for, for your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. And as Abby comes with, with some announcements, just a reminder, those of you who are so faithful and so helpful in taking up chairs when the service is over, we need them to stay down for tomorrow night. So don't, don't stack chairs tonight or today. All right. We will be taking a break for the holidays with Friendship Connection, Revolution, and 648. They will start back up on Sundays uh, starting January 6th. Christmas Eve is tomorrow night. Join us for an evening of celebration. 7 p.m. is the family service. 9 p.m. is the current service. And 11 p.m. is the um, classic featuring the choir and bells, communion, and candle lighting. There will be child care available at the 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. services. Um, don't forget about the youth service tonight um, at 5 p.m. in the sanctuary for the youth. And adults are welcome to come here in Connection Court. Uh, please check the bulletins for other upcoming announcements and events. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday at the Classic at 930. We're back here at the Current at 11. And again, when you leave, please don't stack those chairs. Um, Merry Christmas.
Someday I pray on